Thank you for your invitation uh, to your responsibility panel. And yes, indeed, I'm very sorry that I could not physically attend it this time, but hopefully in the future. Your team is so important and so amalgizing at the same time nowadays, when we really should tackle the circular economy, the resource efficiency and the climate change. It is very much what kind of materials we use, how we use and how effectively do we recycle the material on the highest level back to the uses. Good example of that is of course plastics and uh, how to avoid the overconsumption of the plastics. You know the resource efficiency. We happen to have only one planet and we are using worth 1.5 planet, planets worth resources every year. And uh, the cycle is worsening. More people, more available income, more goods and gadgets and shorter lifespan. That would actually mean that we would need the resources of four planets within 30 years. That does not exist. This is not something what we can do. And so we need to change our regulation. We need to change our patterns of life. And uh, we need to change our consumption patterns. What is the biggest change? It is a system thinking. Not only in silo, how do I avoid this small particle of the plastics, but the question is, how can I provide the service that I'm providing or the good what I'm providing? With tenth of the resources, because this is the tenfold effectiveness what we need to achieve in our consumption and production. With renewable energy and with the tenfold of the energy I'm using today, and this is, of course, throughout the life cycle. So that all non-renewables would be in closed loops and renewables uh, consumed on the levels of sustainability and renewability. And basically no emissions. And not harming the biodiversity. That means that you have to untangle the whole challenge and look this, set the bar right, look this very end where you need to go, and then start backcasting how you get there. And actually one of the most fascinating challenges in this field is food. Food is a big, big part of our waste. We all need food in different levels. And uh, actually the changes on our consumption and production patterns of the food can make the most easiest change. It is the so-called low-hanging fruit compared to many parts of the traffic or constructions or other parts. So we would need to start, how do you make food sustainable? And that means, <coughs> sorry, system thinking there too. It means that you would need to plan, design that kind of a diet and that kind of a menu that uh, is six things simultaneously. Of course, it should be safe. You should know what you are eating, whether you are getting different kind of a viruses or unhealthy chemicals, so that you, what you eat doesn't harm your health. It would need to be secure in a way so that you know where it comes from and uh, what are the consequences of, of the consumption to the other, <coughs> other parts of the uh, life uh, sphere. It would need to be healthy and as you know big part uh, uh, especially of the highly produced uh, alimentation that uh, that's amount in our consumption is increasing is anything but healthy. So it doesn't matter whether that is a Chinese or Vietnamese wok, whether that is Karelian, Pyrox, vegetarian or meat. It needs to be good for your health. Then it would need to be fair. That means uh, that it is uh, fair for the producers uh, in your home country, in Europe and in developing countries 
because you know what happens in land grab, uh, grabbed areas when rice is, pro, for example, produced in Africa. It needs to be fair towards the animals too, ethical, because you would need to be able to look on the eye the one who has given their life to be your dinner uh, uh, menu. And it would need to be, of course, affordable. You can't make the food so exotic and diffi uh, difficult to make and uh, so costly that basically only one or two percent of the planet's population could eat it. And of course it would need to be delicious and very good so that we want to eat it. Okay, where does this all come up to? If you have uh, locally produced, as uh, closely produced as possible, vegetarian based, a lot of uh, bio, uh, locally uh, not farmed but originated fish, and seasonal vegetables, and only once or twice uh, per week the meat, if you choose to consume the meat, what that would then end up to? Is that safe? Do you know when, uh, where that comes from? Especially if uh, it is organic, uh, if the meat is free range or wild game, if it is locally, let's say, lake fish, for example. Is it healthy and nutritional? Is it something that you know what is the impact? Is it fair for the producer? Yes, because the organic producer living close to you gives a, uh, gets a better price from that production than in mass uh, scale and mass uh, uh, competed uh, lines. Is it better for the animals? Well, when you are eating locally produced vegetables, at least you are not eating animals on those days. Plus then you can afford to pay a higher price for free range organic or better uh, raised animal meat when you choose to use it. Is it delicious? It is fresh, it's seasonal, certainly it is. If you lo look, use a lot of uh, uh, vegetable proteins and seasonal vegetables. Is that rather affordable? Yes. So the sustainable food production and consumption is doable. And what is interesting there is that if you do all that, and that is locally produced and as closely produced as possible, you need less packing, less plastics, and you cause less based throughout the production chain. We consumers do have, a, uh, do have our role to play on this, on our cho uh, choices when we go to restaurants or when we go to shops and choose what we are going to uh, uh, pick to our baskets there. But the big, big part is our public procurement and I would like to encourage all of you to contact the policymakers in both uh, state and community level so that when they are buying the uh, food for our workplaces, for our children in daycare, in schools and for our sick people in hospitals and our elderly people, it would be all that. It would be safe locally produced, organic, vegetable based and seasonal, fresh and using a lot of local fish and good quality meat when that is used. Very important that is of course because of the quantities and it is a big pull effect on the whole food market. But it is very important also because we learn new recipes, for example, how you can have a boiled rye with a bit of garlic and oil and beetroot. And it is delicious when you add a bit of a spinach, a fresh spinach in, in that combination. It is very important what kind of food you have in the restaurants, because then when we go to restaurants to eat quickly, or to enjoy our evenings 
This is where we get the experiments. This is where we learn the new recipes and new ways to eat. So thank you for organizing your panel, your discussion, and I wish you all the best luck in your endeavors for better and more sustainable food, circular economy, and better future.